I'm on the campus of the University of California, Irvine. The University of California system has 10 campuses and over 209,000 students. UC Irvine is just about 41 miles south of downtown LA, which means about a 10 hour drive. Now, I'm just kidding, that's a little SoCal traffic humor. Well, the campus was founded in 1965 with about 1,600 students. Today, there are about 25,000 students. And the school has won 18 NCAA team championships. Famous alumni include Steve Scott, one of the greatest milers in history. Steve's 136 sub four minute miles is a record. But you know what, there's a fact that impresses me even more. At one time, Steve held the record for the fastest round of golf. He played 18 holes in 29 minutes and 33 seconds. But here's what's even more amazing. Playing with only two clubs, he shot a 92. So we know a lot of great athletes have been here at UC Irvine. And right now, you're about to meet one more. David Smith's story is an inspiration. This Beyond the Athlete feature is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero. All teams have their special plays and rules, the strategies that set them apart from and hopefully above the competition. For the new NCAA men's volleyball champions from UC Irvine, their special play is called the David Smith rule. The ball's in the air and, and he's kind of going for it. Everyone just backs off because we just let him go for it. The David Smith rule is just that, that you know, David's not going to be able to hear his teammates calling for the ball. He can't hear. So if he wants to take the ball, he takes it. And if he wants to set the ball, he sets it. The namesake for the David Smith rule is a six foot seven inch middle blocker who was just named first team all conference and who holds school career records for both block assists and total blocks. He has helped the Anteaters to be ranked in the nation's top three this entire season. And he's done all of that in spite of a serious hearing disability. From what they know, it was just something from birth. They think it's probably something with the inner ear and the nerve that connects my ear to the brain and just somewhat damaged. When I take out my hearing aids, unless you're standing like five feet away from me screaming at me, I probably won't hear you. I don't think you have to really focus that much on being hearing impaired to like proceed in the world, you know? So it's just something my parents, you know, always reminded me, you know, you're the only one who's gonna be hindered by your hearing disability. And so it's it just, I try, I really do, just try to be normal like everyone else. Well, David is quite normal, but he's certainly not like everyone else. David Smith is a tremendous volleyball player. He does everything so well. I think that's really what makes him stand out from all the other players in the conference. Some guys are really good blockers, some guys are great hitters. David's the type of guy that does all things really well. He can go in and dig balls for you, and honestly, he could probably pass the ball at a pretty high level, too, if we asked him to do that. He's not a real big communicator, just as far as, um, just as far as it's kind of a, a difficult thing for him, but he leads with actions for sure, just how he plays and his dominant presence on the court. In the classroom, David is a civil engineering major. It's just something that I love doing. You know, it really excites me in the class that I'm taking right now. I'm really interested in, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And then volleyball, I mean, it's a privilege and it's a joy to play. You know, it's something that I look forward to every day. Even with the many times the hearing issues get in his way, and that includes having the hearing aid short out when he sweats too much, David does find his disability can also be an advantage. For I always tell the story at the end of the year, you know, if Smith, you know, does something wrong on the court and he knows it, I purposely don't look at him and I just ignore him and, I, and he knows I can't hear him, but he can't do anything about it. Most of the time people try to heckle you when you're serving. So I go back to the end line, they're usually standing behind me or like off to the side and they're just screaming. And I'm just like, I'm just so focused on the serve and the play that I don't even know they're there. And then, you know, when I go off the court, people are like, hey, did you hear those people what they're saying about you? I'm like, no, they're like, I didn't think so either. <laughs> they're, just like, but they're laughing at the hecklers because they know that I can't hear them either. If anything, uh, it kind of seems like it drives them to be better. It's never really been a problem on the court at all. I mean, he's really good at reading lifts and I mean, We've, we've played together, this group of guys, for the last uh, four years with him. And um, I mean, everybody knows kind of their roles on the court as far as, as, far as like the nonverbal communication stuff goes. So I mean, he's pretty on tune with, with what needs to be done and what, when he needs to take the ball and when he needs to let other people take the ball. What's next for me is, uh, 
I don't know, what I duck with tomorrow holds, and I don't really know. So, I mean, I've been juggling ideas between, you know, trying to play professionally, maybe go to Europe, maybe just play on the beach in the AVP tour, um, maybe just drop volleyball together and just go with civil engineering, you know, you never know, you know. But it's obviously something that I think, as every day goes on, it becomes more clear and clear. I guess sometimes I used to think my ideal day was the day that I'm going to be able to go through life without remembering that I'm hearing impaired. But obviously I don't have that luxury and that's, that's fine, you know, it's just the way I am. That's what brought me here right now. Thank you, David, for being such an inspirational NCAA student athlete.